Hello, my name is Brainerd Carey. I've written books for artists, like this one, New Markets for Artists, and this one, Making It in the Art World. I'm an artist and an educator, and today I want to talk to you about an idea for your mailing list. I often talk about newsletters and how to send out newsletters, and one of the things that typically I say is that don't just send out a newsletter to your list when you're having a show or important news, because that's one of the least interesting newsletters. I get a lot of different newsletters from artists, and the ones that are just listing a show or an event, there's nothing to read there really. Oh, I see, and he or she has had different shows or reviews. I don't tend to click through those links and look at them. But when someone sends me a letter that's a little bit odd and has a, a text in it that's something I've never read before or a subject line that I've never read that maybe doesn't quite make sense, I find that very interesting and it's engaging. I call these pataphysical emails. And pataphysics is the, is the idea, a somewhat obscure idea that Alfred Jari discussed. And it's the idea of uh, the science of imaginary solutions. It's kind of the science of nonsense, if you will. They talk about taking humor very heavily. You know, it's, it's a, something that's supposed to be not quite graspable, but you can grasp it. You know, something like the idea of clear milk, something that's a little hard to kind of understand or visualize or imagine. So in this case, what I'm saying, a pataphysical mailing would be something where the subject line and the text is perhaps somewhat poetic, perhaps somewhat disjointed. And maybe it has something to do with your abstract paintings or your portrait photography or your sculptures, you know, in, in a kind of tangential way. But these kind of letters are engaging. Um, Carol Szymanski sent out a whole series of these and I began getting them and was fascinated. She sent out hundreds of these and they went out every few days. And she was doing it all from her phone, as, as I recall. And these emails, I read. They, they were strange. They were weird. They had images of odd things, not always her art, but sometimes her art. And usually sayings that had to do with her life working at a bank, you know, the, the absurdities of what was happening at the bank. But they were all in kind of poetic terms and broken up so that it was hard to decipher what it was exactly. It was a fascinating email. It was an engaging email. And so in this, in this talk today, what I'm suggesting and offering as a bit of advice is in your next email that goes out, or series of emails, 10, 20 in a row, daily, weekly, whatever you want to do, Make it something really odd, really unusual, so that people have to kind of take a double take. What is that about? We all try to communicate so directly and clearly, as I am in these videos. But sometimes something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit odd, is what is the most engaging and effective. I hope that's helpful. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And thank you.